Hi, welcome to the first video lecture for the Smart Systems course. In this course, we're going to walk you through a bunch of different tools and a bunch of different projects. Our first module, module one, we're going to learn how to build fairly complex dynamic models of systems. So this is lecture one. We're going to be talking about the primary tool we're going to use for dynamic simulation. This tool is, this tool is called Collimator. Um, it's a lot like Simulink, but it's really geared for Python users. So Collimator and Simulink have really powerful uh, simulation capabilities. You can do a lot of custom coding, so you can basically code in whatever kind of a model that you want. But then you can also, it has this really nice graphical user interface where you can set up a block diagram, you can connect the output signal from one component model of your system to other component models of your system. So we're going to dive right into Collimator and just give a brief introduction on how to use this tool. So the first step to using Collimator is to just open a web browser. I'm just using Google Chrome and navigate to Collimator's website. This is all cloud-based computing, so all the models are stored and saved on Collimator's uh, server. The first step is just to go up here and go to Try for Free. And even if you already have an account, you still need to go over to that uh, Try for Free. If you don't have an account yet, um, just enter your information into here and create a password and sign up. I already have an account, so I'm just going to go sign in, type in my login and my password. So once you're logged in, the first page it'll take you to is your projects page. So we're just going to work on our own projects here. You can do things like share these projects with other people. We're going to go ahead and start a new project. And I'm just going to call this, I'm going to use this same project for all of the different modules that I create through the next, through the series of videos that are coming up. So I'm just going to call my project Smart Systems to go along with this course. And uh, I'm just going to use no template here. And I'm just going to create this project file. So now I have this project created. Within this project I can do things like create new models, create new scripts, or import things like data files. So I'm just going to go here and create a new model, and I'm just going to call this one Lecture 1. So I go and create a new model. This gives me a nice canvas to use. So in this uh, canvas uh, or it's template for creating our model, we have a lot of different types of blocks that we can add. So I'm going to focus here on these foundational blocks. So some of these foundational blocks will be what we call a source of data. So the simplest source would just be a constant. So I'm going to go over here on the left side, left click on this constant block, and I'm going to drag that in. So what this constant block is going to do, I can populate this with a value. So if I click on the constant block, that's going to let me enter some of these parameters for this block. This one is pretty simple, so I'm just going to say I want this to produce a value of Five. So this could be a place where you're entering a flow rate or a voltage or an amount of energy that's input into your system. So this is a, a source block. So other sources would be things like a step. So I just went to the search and I found a step. So unlike a constant, a step lets you assign a couple of different values. So I can say I want this one to output a value of 5 at the beginning and at the end a value of 10. And at some point in my simulation time, I want to have this step from my start value to my end value. So let's give it a step time of, let's say, 10 time units. And All right. So this collimator allows you to do dynamic simulations in time. When I'm not clicked on any of my blocks, when I'm just clicked here on the blank canvas, this will open up some of the simulation settings. So one of the simulation settings is my total simulation time. And here I have 10. I'm going to change that to 20. And you can also change uh, some of the step sizes that you're taking. So those are some of the blocks. So I can actually run a really simple simulation. This isn't really going to do much. Um, but what I can do is I can left click on each of these. This is a This highlights a data stream. So here I can say I want to be able to visualize the output of each of these source blocks. I go and I click run my simulation that compiles the model and then simulates. And then for every block where I have clicked that show data button, it's going to load this data for me. 
So here I now have a graph with time. This is showing this plot of data, time series data now going from zero up to my end time, which is 20 time units. This could be seconds or minutes or hours or days. However you define the units of your model is what this time will output. So the constant block is pretty simple. It's just giving us this constant of five. And now we're going on the step function, we're going from um, a value of five. So notice the value here where it says step underscore zero, it has a five there. Then the display just above that is showing what time it is. So you see we just, we do step from five to 10 at that time of 10 time units. Okay, so we're keeping it really simple. Let's just add a different type of block. So other, um, other inputs you can have would be like a pulse or a ramp. You can have something like a sine wave or a cosine wave. So these are good sources. And notice that what makes one of the characteristics of a source, it, it, the block only has this little guy, this output block. It does not have an input um, node, rather. Okay, so these are just some other sources you could have depending on how you want to stimulate your system. Okay, so if we just look at this one data source, this step function, again, it's going from five to 10, and it's taking a step after 10 seconds or minutes or whatever our simulation time is. I want to add a transfer function. So I go to my blocks, I search for transfer, I drag and drop this transfer function. So this is a processing block, and notice it has an input node and an output node. So I just want to connect my step to this transfer function. I don't really care where this other signal goes. It stays red because it's not connected to anything. That's just a warning. But I need to give this transfer function, I need to give it some characteristics. So right now, this transfer function has a gain of one. So the uh, whatever step change I make in my original signal, the ultimate step change that it'll make in the transfer function is just one. This has a time constant of one as well. And we'll talk a little bit more about transfer functions in a, a later lecture. So I've got these two blocks connected. I, cl I left click on each of these to enable um, the data viewing. Then I just go here and I hit simulate. So this is going to run my simulation and it outputs both the results of my transfer function and my step. A nice thing that you can do here when you're visualizing data is I can come and grab this signal and I can move this onto that graph. And so now I can plot both of these on the same plot. So this shows that when I make my step change, the step input immediately changes, but then the transfer function has a little bit of a lag to it. So let's try this again. And here we are gonna change some of the parameters of the transfer function. So I'm gonna give this a gain of five and Collimator needs you to keep this in brackets. And I'm going to give this a time constant of, let's say, 5 as well. So let's go ahead and run this simulation now and look at our output. So now we make the step change here. But now we see the transfer function has this much bigger gain. So it's taking a, a, it's multiplying our final output by that gain. And then it also, because of that time constant we introduced to 5, now this transfer function output has a a slower response to our step function stimulus. So stay tuned, we're actually gonna get into custom models that have a little bit more physical meaning if you just go to our very next lecture.